You know, Bionicle was pretty cool back in the day. I should really do something to celebrate the reboot. That's actually a pretty good idea. Make a YouTube channel. I just need to pick out some branding. Hmm, good enough. Bring me a Bionicle game to review. Oh, fuck. Bionicle actually has a pretty extensive history with video games. For those that don't know, Bionicle is one of LEGO's most popular toy lines, lasting from 2001 to 2010. One of its most defining characteristics was an extensive story, and it was a crazy story. It started simple, with six heroes called Toa defending villagers on an island from wild animals. Then there was a secret underground universe, then they added furries, and then by the end there was planet-sized robots dropping moons on each other. And it was all this guy's plan. For some reason. All this plot was spread across four movies, dozens of books, several online short stories, comic books, and yes, video games. Some were pretty good. Some were... Mm. But the game we're looking at today falls somewhere in the middle, and that's Bionicle Heroes. Created by Traveler's Tale, who you may know as the people behind 99% of all LEGO games, the game came fresh off the surprise hit of the LEGO Star Wars franchise. One of the most common criticisms of the time was that it was too similar to other LEGO games created by Traveler's Tale, which is why it might surprise you to know that this is a third-person shooter. While there are definitely many features that are carried over from the other games, such as the emphasis on destroying objects to collect LEGO studs, or the ability to revisit levels with new characters to access new areas. But even to this day, this is probably one of the most distinct LEGO games that Traveler's Tale has made. As far as third-person shooters go, it's pretty bog-standard. You're given a total of six playable characters to start, the heroes from the 2006 toy line, though each character is functionally just a type of gun that you'd find in any other type of shooter. You have the submachine gun, sniper rifle, shotgun, submachine gun again, grenade launcher, and rocket launcher. And honestly, that's kind of a shame. For those of you that aren't familiar with the series, at its core, Bionicle is about pitting heroes with cool powers against villains with even cooler powers. The lore lends itself to gaming so well, I can't even fit all the examples I came up with after brainstorming for a few minutes in this video. There are powers such as channeling fire, ice, electricity, and magnetism. There are also discs with powers such as regeneration and freezing, which can then be combined into masks with all sorts of other powers, such as blocking any attack you can see coming, turning invisible, or creating illusions, and that's barely scratching the surface. I don't even have to explain how these elements lend themselves to game mechanics perfectly. It's practically on a silver platter. And that's why it's such a shame to see all this potential squandered on generic shooter gameplay. There's stuff here to make a spectacle fighter, strategy game, RPG, or to steal from a tweet I saw literally as I was writing the script, Monster Hunter. Unfortunately, the game's issues don't end at wasted potential. Beating the game will probably run you about 12 hours, about double that if you want to 100% it. In theory, that sounds pretty good. But unfortunately, this is the point where Bionicle Hero's biggest problem rears its head. This problem is called Hero Mode. <laughs> Much like games such as LEGO Star Wars or LEGO Batman, collecting LEGO pieces dropped by enemies and objects in a level fills up a gauge, but while they served as an optional bonus in other LEGO games, it's mandatory on Bionicle Heroes. When the gauge is filled, your character turns gold and becomes invincible. This is a permanent power-up until you reach a certain checkpoint in a level, where a golden object will block your way. You then expend your hero mode power to bypass the obstacle. If you aren't in hero mode by the time you reach this point, an endless wave of enemies will spawn until you manage to fill the gauge. What tends to happen is you'll end up entering this mode way too early. This removes whatever remaining element of challenge was left in the game. Alternatively, the game will come to a complete halt just so you can grind for LEGO studs to continue the rest of the level. One of the most grating things about how often you'll encounter hero mode is the music. It replaces whatever unique theme the level had, and while it's not a bad song, about the 50th time it'll start to grate on you. But what really sucks is this isn't even the worst example of it. You see, 
Bionicle Heroes is split into a total of six themed areas, with four levels each. Two of those levels feature a boss battle at the end, and the final level is always an arena for you to fight that area's boss, called a Pyraka. Now while the game might boast having 18 bosses not including the final boss as a result of that, it really only has two. The reason for that? Again, Hero Mode. See, Hero Mode is required for all the bosses as well, so there are really only two types of battle you'll end up having in this game. Either waiting for a boss to spawn a wave of enemies so you can enter Hero Mode and deal mass damage to them, or waiting for the boss to arbitrarily lower its shields so that you can take off a small chunk of their health. There's a common theme between these two methods, waiting. That word basically summarizes Bionicle Heroes. This is really the only reason the game lasts the 12 to 24 hours that it does. Unfortunately, the problems still don't end there. The game is pretty glitchy. You can fall through floors, randomly spawn without a head, or whatever this is. I mentioned earlier that Bionicle has an overarching story. While the game is based on the 2006 storyline in theory, Bionicle Heroes is more of a mashup of Bionicle history, drawing on all the previous years for things like weapons and enemy designs. Not that it means much, considering much like the gameplay, Traveler's Tale has decided to completely ignore the lore for this game. Their officially cited reason is that they didn't want to be limited. But considering the story they ended up putting together, I can't exactly imagine that creative integrity was very high on their priorities list. We open to a voice acted CGI scene, and, well, let's watch. Everything is run amok here, see? Our island has been invaded by the six of Hiraka. Vicious creatures they are. After this character, called Volta, not that the game will tell you, puts this mask on what I assume is you, the viewer's face, the game just drops all pretense of story. The voice acting is awful, though, to be fair, not as bad as what we've seen in other Bionicle games. You have to stop it! But it's definitely not silly or comedic, which not only clashes with what's shown in this cutscene, but leads to major tonal whiplash when you see the rest of the cutscenes in this game. They all follow the root of other LEGO games of the time, in that there's no voice acting besides grunts, and it's primarily focused on comedy. Though while the likes of LEGO Harry Potter, Batman, or Star Wars would make an effort to tell a story, despite there being no voice acting, Bionicle Heroes just throws its hands in the air and gives up. Instead of having any plot points to speak of, we're treated to the boss of each area's amateur stand-up routine. Every character is basically interchangeable with no distinct characteristics beyond they yell a lot. Despite this, it still seems like they didn't have enough ideas to properly fill out the game, so you'll see the same types of jokes reused over and over. Also, a lot of these jokes can be centered around how easily these LEGO figures will fall apart. Isn't that kind of bad advertising? You don't want people to think that you're Mega Bloks. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like the only way I'd be satisfied is if they created a one-to-one -one recreation of the toy's storyline. It's just that the game has these unlockable descriptions for these characters that really paint them as more interesting than they really are, and shows a lot of untapped potential, even if they still went down the comedic route. For example, one of the six Pyraka is described as having five separate allegiances with the other five Pyraka, and he intends to betray them all. This could have been interesting or funny to see, but instead what we get is... this. Or this other character, Rudaka, who served as the main villain of a previous year. Rather than being cunning and manipulative like she's described as being, we get her... looking in a mirror. Because she's a girl, I guess. Girls love mirrors, or something. Though definitely one of the worst examples of not giving a damn is Axon here. He's not even a villain! Each time you beat a Pyraka, you get a rather disturbing scene where you pick up and play with their head, no doubt inspiring many future serial killers, only to have the head stolen by a mysterious 7th Pyraka. For no real reason. Once you beat him six times, the final level is unlocked. And the final boss is almost interesting, at least by the incredibly low standards set by all the other bosses. Then after leaving him to burn alive in the lava, the mask pops out and this vague excuse for a story is concluded. With a random abrupt dance party. If there's a more clear sign of running out of budget, ideas, or both, I'd like to see it. The only thing truly consistent to the source material is the music. It's great, actually. Bionicle has had excellent music from year one, like this.
This game continues the trend, covering a wide variety of genres that suit the area you're exploring. In particular, the guitar riffs are pretty sweet, at least in my opinion. Now while the music is great, the sound design is not. This is what the game sounds like. The final somewhat positive thing I can note is the overall presentation. While the graphics are hardly the best you'll see on consoles of that generation, the actual design is pretty distinct. Often incorporating organic versions of LEGO pieces into the environment, this helps keep a natural feel while still incorporating LEGO into the level design. It also helps draw a distinction between what you can and can't interact with. There are also cool little design elements, like the half-buried corpses of giants that dot the landscape. In a game with more thought put into it, this could be a cool little detail that hints at a deeper history, but that's not the type of game this is. But honestly, the way I see it, if a game can be bothered to put in cool looking crystals, the design can't be that uninspired. Also these collectible medals are some of the most satisfying things to collect I've ever seen in a video game, oh my god. Bionicle Heroes lacks a lot of the interesting purchasable items that you could find in other LEGO games, such as score multipliers or cheat codes. Instead, you'll spend your money on one of two things. Either upgrading your character so they can deal more damage, take more damage, and access new areas, or buying a traction for something called Paraka Playground. More on that in a second. The game is terribly balanced, with the shotgun and grenade being by far the most effective weapons, and the sniper being so useless that his only practical application is using him as a sacrifice so your other better characters can live on, so at least that part's accurate to the canon. Being the Piraka of each area unlocks that Piraka as a special 7th character in each area. They all generally have a powerful weapon, and they all come with the ability to unlock special Piraka areas. However, being the final boss replaces all of the previous Piraka with the special 7th Piraka, who can not only unlock their areas, but also special new areas just for him. As such, there's really no purpose in replaying levels until you beat the game. Collecting everything and getting a gold medal in each level are key elements to obtaining 100% completion. But you also have to buy everything, and that includes attractions for your Piraka playground. It's exactly what it sounds like, a playground where any Piraka you defeated will gather and play on any attractions you purchase for them. What this translates to is more stand-up routines, and it really highlights how interchangeable these characters are, as any random Piraka can take part in these activities. Besides that, all that's left is three unlockable levels. They're all arenas where you'll fight swarms of one of the three types of enemies, your goal being defeating as many as you can within the time limit. Not exactly stimulating, but once you get gold medals in those, you'll have reached 100% completion. The game punishes you for your stupidity by inflicting you with more voice acting. Also, a whirlpool about the side of the island you've been exploring opens up and presumably kills everybody. The end. And that's Bionicle Heroes. Definitely not a good game, but there's a level of care and effort put into it that makes me hesitate to call it an awful game. It's more or less functional, just badly designed and completely uninterested in the source material. What little story there is honestly weakens the game. But the music and level design are good enough that I think it at least merits knowing of the game, even if you're not playing it. There are definitely worse licensed games, but there are also definitely much better games out there. I've seen some Bionicle fans defend this on the basis that it's good if you're a Bionicle fan, but I'd have to disagree. I feel like people unfamiliar with the series might feel like they're missing references to an overarching story. The fans will probably just be disappointed there's nothing to miss in the first place. Overall, it's inoffensive. Definitely not something to go out of your way to play, but an interesting footnote since this was the last Bionicle game ever made. Thanks for watching. If you've got thoughts to share, leave a positive or negative comment below. I've also been told that liking and subscribing helps, though I'm not really sure how. But hey, if you like this video, check out Caspasaurus' Digimon Review Trilogy. Or if you want to see me shake my fist angrily at video games, you can follow me at HatTalkTalk on Twitter. And with that, see you next time. Next time on Game Sharks. It's all it's a like war. Our our never before. Has Always no online. No. DRX. Make your selection. Damn you. CEO Kazurai.